So yeah, my name is Felipe Borges and I've been working on Gnome Music for one year from now. It's it's my side project, it's something I hack on when I'm not playing with my cat. And I work for Red Hat on desktop team. Oh, okay. Better not. Yep. Okay. So yeah, I work for Red Hat on desktop team and I've been involved with Gnome since I was 17. Yeah, I was doing translations to Brazilian Portuguese and then 2012, uh, I got involved on Google Summer of Code and then I start hacking and now I work on it. So it's pretty cool. And, uh, <laughs> and I think the, I, I wanted to mention that the Summer of Code because music is like an entry point for interns and we have been having plenty of newcomers and they they choose Gnome Music and Outreach students as well. So I would like to highlight that this actually works because it worked for me and has been working for plenty of other students, just like Carlos there in the door, who was also a student and became a maintainer. So about music itself, I want to answer in this talk, what's music? Oh, I don't have it mirrored, so I'll be looking at there. Uh, what music isn't? What's the state of music right now and what's in the future? So lots of what's. So what's music? Music is a player for Gnome, a player for Gnome, and I want to mention that because it's really, it's really Gnome. It's like it's supposed to run on Gnome. Looks like all the content apps we have, and uh, we don't have any ideas of taking it to different platforms or nothing like that. It's just it's like really philosophy of doing one thing and doing it really right. And content app is in the sense that it's these apps that it's uh, activity oriented. Like on GNOME Shell, we have the activities button and there you express what you want to do. So we have documents for managing your documents and music for your music library, your collection, photos. And the idea is that you are not managing files directly, you are managing the information they represent, the content. So music is definitely based on tracker, which is indexing those files and letting us access it and it's design driven so we are not implementing anything uh, before discussing with designers by the way our designers are here and um, so yeah all the features are designed before we implement them and then we have hookups which are pretty cool and then we try to make them reality sometimes it doesn't work but and i put a not written box because a lot of people come, uh, get to us saying that they want the written box features on music. And written box is kind of old school player in the sense that it does everything and it's really crowded, cluttered, and it's really what we don't want to have on music. So you're probably wondering what does it look like if you still didn't have it, because it's not the default in the distributions, the main distributions we're shipping, so you probably would need to to download it for your package manager. So this is how it looks like in the main view. We have there the stacks, the views, where you can browse for albums, artists, songs, and playlists. You can see that I'm a big gangster rap fan. <laughs> and yeah, here in the bottom, you have the, the player bar. Oh, uh, so it's definitely not written box in the sense that written box has podcasts, written box uh, can can play radio and plenty of other stuff. And these are not features we want. Maybe we could somehow have in the future um, another app sharing the same source code for with music to do these uh, activities, just like uh, Books does for documents. They live in the same source tree, but they have different launchers. And I really think we shouldn't mix the, the context. Like when you are managing your podcasts, you're not, it's not the same as managing your music library. And same for radio, I guess. It's just maybe a question of opinion. <laughs> so we got to the point around where I want to speak about the newcomers. And the reason I mentioned that I was a JSOC student in the beginning is that um, music is pretty much brought up by interns. Like it was built by Vadim in the beginning, but um, it, he was mentoring plenty of interns doing cool job, a really cool job, and 
Now we have, in this last year, three interns working on it, one on, well, from the outreach and two of Google Summer of Code. Unfortunately, just one, one of them managed to come to, to Guadec, but they're, they're, and the reason music attracts the newcomers is like, it's really small, the code base is really easy to master, like some 10 files or so you can browse cool because it's really well designed and it's really simple and everybody uses a music player pretty much and it's python so python is a language which has a high level of abstraction and plenty of universities are teaching algorithms in python it happened to, to me so we have this young students who know python and they want to to work on GNOME. they go through music so for this year the newcomers the interns they have worked on the playback popover that I'm going to show next, audio tag editing, like the, our intern is sitting right there, and on cloud integration, which is pretty much the same as next cloud integration so far, as soon as they don't, as long as they don't break the API. Uh, part to GTK Flowbox is happening as we speak because uh, George had a bad night and he just sent tons of patches and it works fantastically fine. So we are reviewing it and we pretty much hope that it's going to make it to the next release. So uh, Jordana, she's Brazilian. She worked on the playback popover and I'm going to show now what it is. It's pretty much that uh, you never know what was going to play next to music. Sometimes you are in our collection and you start playing an album, the first song of the album, and it it's going to play the, the second one and the third one and so far. But sometimes you're playing playlists, so it's really based on context. And the playback popover gives you this idea of what's going to play. And it's like contextual. So if you're in album view and you click here in the player, you would see this popover, which has this album look, where here you have some buttons. And here for playlist view, you just know which is the next song, the previous one, and so forth. Yeah, these designs are, these implementations probably gonna change. There are some misalignments here, you can probably see. Because this code isn't, is, didn't get into master yet. So it's gonna have some reviews and I really want to sit with designers to, to discuss this. Okay, so this is artist view. So it looks differently, the, the playback popover. And for the other feature, we have audio tag editing. We much sometimes have the unknown album, unknown user, unknown player, artists, and you want to rename that, you want to fix that. So Saifu has been working on it. It's on Tracker. We need to write back capabilities of Tracker of editing something in a dialogue and actually updating the store, the Tracker database. So what pretty much it does, yeah, this design is also not up to date because this feature is not going to make for 3.22, I guess. Um, so yeah, it's pretty much you can select one song and the action bar is going to show up this edit details button. It's going to pop over this dialogue and you can update the things. And the cool thing about this feature is that Tracker is using... We are using Grillo to actually uh, get some ID which identifies this song and carries a server database, the Audio Brains database, and it can actually use the internet to get the metadata. So music can actually find out what's the album of the song and artist and compositor for you, composer, and it can suggest to you and you can just use the results or you can manually uh, overwrite this these properties. So I think this is pretty cool. And Guarov has been working on OnCloud integration. OnCloud is the server, this, um, oh, that's way better. Better? Yeah. yeah, I asked for, I asked to have the microphone in the first place. So Michael is a witness of that. But the reason was that I don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> and it feels more like a rapper like this. <laughs> so OnCloud on has this server 
which you can have your host host your files and it can um, it pretty much does what Google does, but it's free software and you can self-host it. So you have all control of your information. And the thing is like they have uh, on cloud music, which you can have your library of music and play it with their own player on Android. And hopefully you play with this on GNOME music as well. You know, music, some people don't know that, but it's already able to play songs from Jamendo, for instance, because of Gorilla. Gorilla is able to find these songs. And it's, if you just search for that, it's gonna show up in the artist view or whatever. So on cloud would be pretty cool. And here is the screenshot of it because there is no UI involved because on cloud would have uh, the authentication part on GNOME Online accounts, which manages the logins and stuff on GNOME. And the songs should just pop up on the view. So pretty much there is nothing to there is nothing to to, differ, to to make it different the local songs and the remote ones. Later, you're probably going to be able to sync it, but this is considered to be an extended goal because this is a lot of work for internship, and he's been doing like lots of code and good quality of it. So, what's for the future? Uh, code refactoring. Yeah, some people have said that music doesn't have a strong code base in the sense that lots of people have played with it, and we are not following any code patterns so far. So we are in a, in a process of discussing how to make the code more readable and improve code quality for actually keep the engagement going on, like kept having students being able to understand the code and make their first contribution through GNOME Music. Because I guess this is one of the important parts of software as well, not just being there for you when you want to play your music, but also inclusion and making our community more diverse. Uh, yeah, for the code refactoring, I guess it would be really cool if we would have full support for widget templates in PyG object. We are not quite there yet for what we want, but we could decouple sometimes the UI part of the code and the logic. Um, smarter smart playlist. Yeah, we have this smart playlist, but we could somehow have in the future these sub heuristics to create playlists based on party time or its working hours. So you could get some custom songs for that time based on it, just suggesting time based songs, but you could have anything. And remote devices integration is like, it's an effort that has been going on for content apps for a long time. And yeah, it will be really interesting because so far, that's probably the main reason the distributions are not shipping music so far, because you're not able to plug on your iPod or your phone and play your songs from it or vice versa, like move them around. So yeah, unfortunately, this is not quite there yet, but one day we need to have some faith. Um, so yeah, I, I want, really want to encourage everyone to contribute. If even if you have never worked on GNOME at all, like making code contributions, music is a really good entry point, and we have been doing like a great job with the with Bastian and Carlos in the newcomers initiative about uh, tagging our bugs for newcomers and being on our IRC channel to drive the newcomers through the process of submitting their first patch. And so in this week page, we have all the information you need to get in contact with us, uh, developer resources, pretty much IRC channel is where we discuss all the stuff. And there you can find the roadmap for the future features we want to implement. And also a link for all the bugzilla bugs which have the newcomers keyword. So the, we are actually documenting these bugs, like putting information, a guide through for interns to uh, be able to solve this bug easily. Yeah, I kind of went too fast, but we have time now to speak. So thank you a lot for watching it, for coming to WADAC. And we are hosting a Hackfest on Wednesday. Is it Wednesday? Tuesday. 
and everybody's welcome to join. So thank you a lot. All right, we got plenty of time for questions. Uh, yeah, two small things. Is the is is there plans uh, just like for I think there was designs for photos and so forth for opening files like from file browser? Is there also plans for music to open files and then you can import or something like that? Yeah, in the discussion for having music on Fedora, this was one of the requirements. So we are pretty much thinking about having it being oh. able to open the files. Okay, and even though I disagree with that. <laughs> And uh, the second question is, uh, does uh, playback of the playlist work in the master now? Like, uh, so it goes to the next one? The playback popover, you mean? Uh, yeah, when you take one of the generated playlists and you press a song and it plays and go, it goes to the next? In the master? Yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. I'll test it. <laughs> So I saw that you are uh, putting some uh, online services with no music, but are you looking into online services for searching songs, like similar to Spotify or something, even if it's just for searching and then buying the song or something? Yeah, if they had a API which would allow us to search, why not? But yeah, the main thing about people going to streaming services is that these services are really closed software, software that wouldn't never allow us to play back it. But yeah, maybe if we were allowed to buy it like iTunes, that would be cool. Like I think SoundCloud is one of the services that does it like this and is, uh, has an API, online API, so. Yeah, yeah, patches are well. I think it's the only, it's the thing I'm missing in no music because I'm using Spotify or SoundCloud just because of that. Yeah, so. yeah, I quite understand that, the use case, yeah. But patches are welcome, Carlos. Anyone else? <laughs> Sorry. Maybe I could go there. <laughs> well, thank you, Michael. It's a lot of effort, I know. Um, I just wanted to mention how easy it is to extend uh, Gunner Music into uh, handling more services, like, for example, different radios, uh, services like SoundCloud. There's a, an off-written source for SoundCloud that, that you could already use and integrate, maybe finish off the uh, finish of the code and integrate into directly into uh, into good on music everything's written in Lua because it's so much easier to to talk to uh, those types of services even if they don't really have an API for example as long as we've got web pages you can start scraping the uh, the web pages and we've been doing that for a number of uh, video websites for example. If you don't offer an API, we've got an easy way around that. Uh, so SoundCloud is one of the good ones because it does have an API, but if you've got one particular service that you use, please consider writing, you know, 100 lines of Lua to have search and browsing and have it directly integrated into Gun on Music and Rhythmbox because Rhythmbox uses the same backend, it uses Grido as well. So even if you don't use Gnome Music right now, if you write the if you write that provider for Grillo, it works right now in Rhythmbox. It will work in the future when you use Gnome Music, so you don't lose any development time. Yeah, it takes Bastion for Grillo. Makes our life so much easier. Any more questions? <laughs> <laughs> You're doing this on purpose. <laughs> this is just a comment. Uh, I think it's really cool that there are so many interns in you no know, music, and uh, I think uh, it's doing a really great job. 
uh, both the interns and also the mentors who are helping the newcomers get involved and starting with the newcomer box and so forth. And I hope uh, you will continue the good work. Oh, thanks. I also like to thank Carlos uh, Arco and Vitor Toso, which are also mentoring students for for music. It's really good that we have our community into the world. Let's just. So, if there's no further questions, uh, one last round of applause for Felipe. Oh, oh, oh! I see a further question. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, I had a comment. You mentioned uh, synchronizing with uh, external devices. Um, I don't think that you need to care about synchronizing with uh, iPods and iPhones and that sort of thing. It's been a long, long while since it was possible to synchronize with uh, recent uh, Apple devices on, on using free software. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you can just drop that. Um, consider adding support for Android phones. I think that many people are going to thank you. Yeah, yeah. And you can reuse the work that Rhythmbox has been doing on integration with GVFS MPT to access those devices. Yeah. Okay, Probably we now have, question. pardon? Probably the other person has another question. <laughs> I don't see any further questions from that side of the room. So uh, we now have a 35 minute break. So go forth and enjoy yourselves.